All right, I've gotten a lot of requests lately to basically talk about my own training, and while I'd love to be able to tell you exactly what I'm going to do when I go to the gym, the truth is, I don't have a fucking clue what I'm going to be doing until I'm actually doing it. A lot of the decisions that I make are very on the fly, so the best I can do for you, try to give you an understanding and how I go about making my decisions. If you take a look here, we got a feedback loop. You got input, you got feedback. My training is very subjective. I base a lot of what I do off the feedback my body gives me. That determines my input. But how do I determine what my first input is going to be? It's going to be based off the muscle that I want to train. It's going to be based on whether or not I'm in pain when doing something. This can change from day to day. It's going to be based on whether or not the muscle I want to train is fully recovered from the last time it was stimulated. Maybe I want to train it before it's fully recovered. Maybe I don't. But if it's sore, that will likely influence the way I do what I do. It's also going to be based off preference. you got to understand you are rewarded more than anything for your effort. There's no magical exercise. There's no magical amount of weight. There's no magical number of sets and reps. You're rewarded for your effort. So it's in your best interest to include the exercises that you enjoy doing the most since those are the ones you're going to work hardest at. Now, this isn't to suggest that maybe your mentality is as such that you don't like doing something because it's hard. Because it's hard, you don't like doing it. Therefore, you're not going to do it. If that's your mentality, training ain't for you. This suggests that since you're rewarded for your effort, you might as well pick the things that you enjoy doing the most. You also have to have a reason for why you're doing what you do. If it's me, I'm either doing something to recruit, to fatigue, or to facilitate. Now, I can use the same tool to promote various responses by modifying the way I do what I do. And those of you who watch the videos are probably very familiar with the terms recruit and fatigue, but facilitate might require some explaining. So I want you to bear with me. If my purpose is to recruit, I'm going to pick an exercise that has a very high ceiling. I'm talking about a bench press, a squat, a deadlift. To illustrate the point, think about how much weight you can lift on those exercises. How much more is it than when you first started doing them? How much do you think it'll be in a year or five years or 10 years? The point here is some people can add several hundreds of pounds to those exercises over the course of their lifetime. The reason those exercises have the highest ceiling. They're very appropriate for the purpose of recruiting. Something like a lateral raise or a dumbbell curl, how much weight can you do? How much more is it than when you first started? What is it, like five pounds more? How much more do you think you'd be doing in a year if any more weight? What about five years? What about 10 years? If you're not going to be able to lift any more weight or maybe only like five pounds more, that is not a very appropriate exercise for the purpose of recruiting because it doesn't have a very high ceiling really at all. Now, if I'm trying to promote growth through recruitment, generally I'm trying to do so through mechanical tension and muscle damage. If I'm trying to promote growth through fatiguing, generally I'm trying to do so through metabolic stress. Now, for this purpose... You can do whatever fucking exercise you want. Pick the one that you like the most because that's the one you're going to work hardest at. But it also should be based off your capacity to recruit. If you're not feeling the muscle that you want to when doing an exercise, it's probably not a very appropriate exercise for you for now. Now, as it relates to facilitating, this is the most instinctive type of training that there is. To be able to pull this off, you have to have a thorough understanding of how to use the tools that you're choosing to include into your strategy and how your body generally responds to using certain tools certain ways. This can't be taught. You can only learn this through experience. Through experience, you'll have an idea of how your body's going to respond to different things on different days. Now, this is one of the biggest things that differentiates my training from a lot of other people. I do a lot of facilitating. I'll give you an example to illustrate the point. Let's say I'm doing a squat. Now, I can do a squat to recruit, to fatigue, or to facilitate. Let's say my purpose today is to recruit. If I'm not feeling physically prepared to perform at my best, am I going to just keep doing what I'm doing? Risk injury? No. I'm going to go do something else to facilitate the response I'm looking for. Maybe I do a leg extension. Maybe I do a leg curl. Maybe I do both. Maybe I do a leg press. Maybe I do a lunge. The point here is that I'm going to use other tools to facilitate the response I'm looking for. So by the time I'm done my squats, I might have done 100 reps of something else or 100 different things entirely. But what I'm doing is I'm using other tools to facilitate the response I'm looking for. A lot of times people come up to me and say, hey, what type of circuit are you doing? Is that a superset or something? No has nothing to do with that. I'm using the tools in the toolbox to facilitate the response that I'm looking for. And it's one of the biggest things that separates my training from everybody else. Now, as it relates to my goals, why do I do what I do? Have fun. That's why I'm doing what I do. I don't have any specific goals at the moment as far as building muscle or getting stronger. I feel I've reached the ceiling in a lot of ways. I could get bigger. I could get stronger, but I'd have to invest so much. The return on investment is not a worthwhile investment for me for now, in my opinion. If I had a very specific goal, I would do the same thing over and over and over again because that's one of the most effective ways to force an adaptation onto the body. But since my goals are to have fun, I just do whatever the fuck I want. As it relates to having fun, some of the things I've been doing recently that are fun for me for now, 
using a lot of work with resistance bands and reverse bands, basically attaching the resistance band to the top of the squat rack when doing a press or a squat. What this does, it unloads the weight at the bottom where you're weakest and most susceptible to injury and it helps you get out of that position. And then when you get to the top, there's more weight where you're stronger. Is it magical? Fuck no. But it's fun for me for now. Now, one more thing as it relates to my training, I rarely ever do a full blown shoulder workout and it's been that way for years. I don't see much of a return on investment. The shoulders get worked with anything anyways. If I am to train the shoulders, it's to fatigue them after they've been recruited when doing a press or a pull up or a row or something like that. But right now, the way I perceive it is all I'm doing with a full blown shoulder workout, adding on to the amount of work my body needs to recover from. So I wish I could tell you what I'm going to do when I go to the gym, but I have no idea what the fuck I'm gonna do till I'm doing it. It's very subjective and it's based on the feedback that my body is giving me. I have a structure and have freedom within that structure to do whatever the fuck I want. My structure, recruit, fatigue, facilitate. But most importantly, why I'm doing what I do right now, just to have some fucking fun. If you like the information, share it, click the fucking button at the bottom of the screen you're looking at, subscribe to the channel, support me, and I'm gonna keep on bringing it.